Jesus' eyes were black, having no color around the pupils, just black, empty holes, which made my hair prickle with a strange feeling of fear and sadness combined. I stopped talking and did not speak again. I sat in the coffee shop next to Andy. Actually, he was across from me, staring into the chilly, rainy afternoon, which was a sight I grew to love about Oregon. I almost dreaded seeing the sun. Today, I somehow wish... Somehow today I wish it had been out. Something folded upon me like a heavy blanket of evil. I shuddered as I took my last sip of coffee, turned to leave and walk back through the ornate and beckoning cemetery overlooking my small one-room apartment. It was a beautiful cemetery. The wrought iron fence that wrapped around it was handmade and so well done. In parts, I was awestruck by the craftsmanship, especially at this one place, this one gate. Gene. 
and what was he doing walking with me since I had never heard him speak to me ever before in the year and a half I had lived there, not even 200 feet from his little tiny apartment. Not a wave, not a blink, not even a look. And yet here we were walking down the rainy streets of Eugene into the cemetery. and it wasn't his motivation to get me to the cemetery. As we turned the corner away from the busier main street, Andy relaxed a little and showed a little bit more comfort with me. I was intrigued with his behavior and confused at the same time. Okay. 
was raising in the veil of water started to close in suffocating my ability to breathe I had to leave this place I, um, I felt like it was going to asphyxiate me like he was going to grab me and start strangling me at any moment I don't know why I felt this overwhelming fear of this young man who had done nothing but been nice so far. I did not care about the rain. I got up on my knees to leave. I felt like my heart was about to explode. I did not know what to do. I just wanted out. I just wanted to go home. Wanted to do. I didn't care if it was a co op with a one bedroom, two by four, with one large window that the full moon always rose in, which I found interesting. Why? At first, I thought it was because he was going to kill me. To quite honest. This is something I had not felt before, at least not at this point in my life. It was a darkness imprisoned. It imprisoned his soul. For a second, I really thought my life would be over. Fear rushed through me as the air became even heavier. As I got up on my knees to stand up, he said, Before you go, you should know one thing. What? I almost snapped at a lack of oxygen and need to be free of his grasp. Tomorrow, you and I will be different. You will know me, the real me. And no longer will anyone feel the way I just made you feel. He softly said as he gently put out his cigarette into the moisture of the grass, still protected from the torrential downpour beyond the arms of the evergreen. It was boring uh, now, harder than ever. about why did you seem so happy for a brief moment your eyes they were almost glowing with joy why 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 I yelled I'm frantic now as I ran I ran out from the safety of the tree the protective arms of the big old vine and into the piercing gold rain that felt like razor blades against my cheek oddly warm and freezing because of the tears streaming down my face. I ran as fast as I could, slipping on the linoleum floor as I flew my body into the co-op building. My body was soaking wet. I was shivering. Misjudged the distance and lost all footing as I made the left turn to the hallway that led past Andy's room and mine. I did not leave my room. I could not move from the bed. I was soaking wet and I did not care. My mind raced with thoughts that I knew were not my own horrific pulsating pictures of death flipped endlessly through my mind until I could not take the feeling anymore for a second longer and apparently either passed out or fell asleep as I opened my eyes at 3 a.m. I'd never felt such pain or emptiness or loneliness inside my body. I have never since or before, but 
my mouth was so dry, I could not manage a single word, but all I felt like doing was screaming and running, running fast, leaving everything that happened behind, but it was too late to putting my shoes on. I did not speak. I did not speak a word as I passed the three adults trying to stop me. I pushed them aside, pausing briefly, looking into their eyes that changed from pity, pity to fear. I'm sorry, I just, then I walked out. My mind, I had to clear it. running through my mind. It was burning my soul. Turning to look at them one last time, I said hoarsely, I should have known. With tears forming in my ice blue eyes, I spun around and ran as fast as I could until I just could not run anymore, crying, screaming, punching my head, scolding myself for not knowing, for not feeling it, for not seeing it. How could I not see it? He came to me. He came to me for help. I think, I don't know, I don't know what he wanted, but he had left me here. Alone, with no answers, no beginning, no end. Just death, just an end. He was eight. Understand. I was not afraid of Andy. I was afraid of the death that surrounded him. And that's what I was so angry at myself for not seeing. He had committed to what he did in the cemetery with me. He was so happy when his eyes were green, they lit up, and I saw a glimpse of who he really was. I could not, how could I not have seen it? How? I was so angry at myself for not understanding him. Images of his lifeless body hanging from ceiling in his room flashed through my mind. My stomach retched each time I saw his blue face, his eyes bulging out of his head, coming out of their sockets, the shell of a, of a man, the smell of defecation which stung my nose as the memory came flooding back. Andy, right? He was right about one thing. Our lives were different today. He had chosen to interrupt the natural movement of time. He chose to kill himself, and I knew Open communication. 
communication with the other side, ignored their looks of pity which I could still feel like a weighted, heavy blanket uh, made me tired. I did not sleep in that room for a couple of days. I slept under the tined arms of the vine, hoping Andy would appear next to me to explain what in the hell he had just done. Why would you commit to such a fate, such a final act against his future? Eighteen, he was eighteen years old. My body could not stay another moment because I was so cold. I knew I was going into hypothermia. Warm enough to live. And I did not desire to die. I started to lift my head off the ground to go back to the dining room where undoubtedly the realities of what had happened with the day before would remain fresh. Questions would have to be answered. Nobody knew his name except for me. Nobody knew his parents except for me. Nobody knew his best friend Sadie, his little dog, except for me. I don't know, and I will never know why he did this. Not that I feel sorry for myself. I just don't know why somebody else would put their suffering onto another person and not explain it. about him dragging on the cigarette and the way he looked at me into my eyes and how his eyes changed and the way he moved from one military stance to relax to almost childlike confused me even more. I don't know, even to this day, I mean, the same. Wrong time kind of thing. And there was 
life, wherever he is. <laughs> <laughs>